This podcast is brought to you by MaximusMark.com. Hey, hey, folks, it's Maximus Mark, and welcome to the show that punches you right in the face with information, but in a good way. It's Maximus Mark Radio. Now, today I have a very special podcast for you. It's not my traditional podcast. This podcast was actually recorded in 2008, and the podcast is with none other than Janet Kane. Now, I've been training Janet Kane since about 2006. Um, Janet has won uh, two Australian titles, both with the IMBA and the AMB. She's won a Miss Olympia title. Um, very soon she's actually going to compete in the Australasians and you know she's obviously going to smash it there as well so this interview is actually done in 2008 as I've said and what it really is about is the mindset of a champion it's before Janet actually won all those titles as I said it's in 2008 and Janet won those titles in 2009 and 2010 so it's a very interesting look at the mindset that it takes to be a champion you're going to listen to and hear her mindset before she's won those titles and the mental processes that she goes to to be the very best in the world at what she she does so I really hope you guys enjoy this interview it's a very unique look at someone's mind Set and I ask her all the, the hard probing questions about how she actually thinks when it comes towards competing, diet and training to get up on stage to be a world-class athlete. So enjoy the interview, leave your comments below, feel free, I'm beginning a lot of questions if people can share these interviews on Facebook. Yes, you may share these interviews on Facebook as long as you provide Uh, give the links where you got it from. So in other words, you share the link that's on my website, MaximusMark.com, and you you can share it on Facebook that way. So enjoy the interview, leave your comments below, and uh, speak. Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another edition of the interview series. Today I'm sitting here with uh, Janet Kane, um, absolute champion. She's just come off the uh, big win at the all-female IBA titles. Uh, she came, won the overall. I was there. She looked in absolutely phenomenal shape. So welcome today, Janet. Thank um, you. Thank you for your time. So we're, we've got the pleasure of, of interviewing you and finding really getting your mindset, getting inside your mind, why you do the things you do, um, and uh, look forward to it. So. Plenty of value here. Um, the first thing we want to obviously see is, is with, with everyone who's you know, had great success as physique athletes, um, where did you come from? How did you get into bodybuilding? Where, where was your starting grounds? Uh, it was actually a, a, a progressive um, start, really. I uh, was a little bit uh, tubby and lost a little bit of weight or, or challenged myself and lost 30, 23 kilos. Um, like the way you say, it's a little bit of weight? A little bit of weight, 23, massive weight loss. And um, so then head to the gym to maintain that um, shape and got into triathlons, did a few of those and kept fit and then started a family. And I was just actually looking for the next challenge and someone said that I should compete in bodybuilding and my expectation of bodybuilding was, you know, be hurly-burly girls and really didn't have the right perspective. So I went along to a bodybuilding show and was pleasantly surprised. I thought, wow, that's something that I could do. So it then became my next focus and challenge to um, train for something and for that. And, uh, yeah, it got well, started a couple of years ago. And what was the first uh, show you, you actually saw as a, as a spectator? Um, it actually was um, a Melbourne title and all uh, INBA show. And Remember the year? It was 2004 was the year I went yeah. to, to have a look at it. And I'd um, had one child at that stage, went along to the show and thought, well, that's possibly something I can do this year, next year, but we were planning a second child. And we're back. Um, as you were saying, Janet, you, um, Janet, is, is you, you're planning your, um, your second child. Yeah. And Janet, and we're joined by one of your children right here now. <laughs> Never a dull uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, it was um, something, it was whichever was going to come first, either a bodybuilding show or planning the, the second. And, <laughs> and young Kelsey came along just prior to um, setting setting that goal so I continued training whilst pregnant actually with with the aim to to compete once I'd finished um, um, feeding her and um, that all came to fruition I um, did my first competition whilst still breastfeeding I couldn't wait actually but um, she was about 17 months old there I was ready to give it away when she was 18 months and did my first competition and yeah, continued on. So um, anyone could. Do it. it was pretty amazing in, in my mind to be able to, to compete with bodybuilding whilst still breastfeeding. 
but um, it can be done. It can be done. It just can it be done. shows that it can be done. It can so be done. Obviously, you know, a mother of two, um, you, you know, very busy life. You, you do run your own business as well. Um, no. What, what would a day of the no. life? What would a day of the life consist of? Um, <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> showing for this me question. a toy. It's actually a little Yoda toy. So what would what would a day of the life consist no. of? Um, um, okay. I've got a, a son that's in grade one, and um, young Kelsey here. We're listening to who's no. three. So my morning's fairly busy with getting the, the children no. organised and ready. So that could start at five or. or six o'clock in the morning with these guys um, and it's really getting Dylan off to school and uh, Kelsey and I head to the gym straight away and she has a play in the creche and I get train my training done first thing in the morning. So I understand uh, like when you're competing for a show you do your, your cardio sometimes on an em empty stomach? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you get As up I'm, at what time would you get up to do your cardio? Uh, probably about uh, five. 5 a.m. I would uh, I've got a, um, a little home gym here so I would jump on the treadmill uh, you know, 10 past 5 and get 30 minutes of, of cardio work done and then get awoken by my little angels and, and start the morning from that point. So I would probably get 30 to 45 minutes of cardio work done, get the kids off to school or one of them off to school and then um, straight off to the gym to do my weight session and do another another cardio session at the end of that one and so continue on for the day. So there's not much space between your... Um, your it's pretty much, as soon as you get up, it's pretty much go, 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 go. Straight away. And, and timing <laughs> timing for supplementation um, is, is fairly important as well. No. <laughs> timing for supplementation, so there's a certain... At what point I get up and, and start taking my protein to you know, make sure that I'm getting the best value out of the cardio that I am doing and not depleting. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so what would, what would you think are the, the three keys, obviously, of the busy lifestyle? You know, you, you get all, all the things that you need to get done. Um, what do you think, if you, you could just put it into three key vital elements that people would need to focus on to achieve success in the, uh, I guess, the mindset, the three, the three keys um, for you that's been... Um, absolutely you know you need to achieve your goals well I believe it's imperative to have the right attitude um, everything comes from the right attitude if you if you have uh, what it takes in your mindset then everything else comes and, and people quite often ask me that or comment that I'm a fairly motivated person and um, that they want a bit of my motivation well motivation comes from within and it all starts from the right attitude. So if you have the right attitude, everything else follows. So I would have to say that that's um, the major key. Then from that point, it's just being organised. Uh, I have a purpose for everything I do and um, plan it. And if I plan the, the busy life of children and, and everything else that I do, then it doesn't take control of me but I do believe nutrition is a major key. So attitude, organisation, nutrition and... Yeah, nutrition, mm. absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Perfect. Um, so what, what, what would drive you? Like You talked about a little bit briefly about motivation. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a specific driving factor that, you know get you up in the morning like obviously you don't need to get up and you know, it's it just seems that you're you know full of spark 24 7 yeah quite often getting up in the morning is determined by the the bash on the head from a three-year-old that says mummy mummy i want breakfast <laughs> and that could be at five o'clock so um but really that i i guess i'm uh, i'm i'm a fairly driven person that if i've achieved something i like to go that next step and and achieve something that i haven't so go where i've never gone but also to, to be the best. And I, I don't believe we're put on this earth to, to just be. We've got to be the best at whatever we do. If you're going to do something, give it 100% or yeah. give it 120. So if I have achieved something, I've been there before, I'd like to achieve something that I perhaps haven't done. And that gives me the reason to, to keep going. And, and being in control of that myself, um, I have only myself to talk to, to answer to, and to be grateful with that result if I have achieved that and when I have because that um, is um, solely my, my responsibility. I have no, there's no, re no room for excuses or for blame. I can be in control of whatever I do and be happy with the outcome. Yeah, um, I'd just like to point out now, the, the mindset that you have is an absolute mindset of a champion, champion and for everyone listening um, to this audio, you know, do take note of, of the way you know, you process 
process your thoughts. Um, you know, it, it's, it's absolute key. Um, what are the, uh, some of the effects, I guess, that bodybuilding has had positively on your life? Um, bodybuilding is, is um, it's a lifestyle choice. It's not something like a, a tennis game where you go and play a round of tennis and have a, a practice match once a week and off you go. Bodybuilding is a choice for nutrition as well as the workouts in the gym and sleep. So it really is a, is a fair commitment to excel well at. Uh, you can pe perfect one area and you can train really hard in the gym, but if there's no balance for everything else then you can't really be the best that you can be. You're really missing a major point. So, um, And that's vital because a lot of people um, get into the sport and they live to bodybuild. They don't yeah. use bodybuilding to enhance their lives, which yeah. I believe, and obviously you believe as well, is what the sport is all about. So use bodybuilding as a tool to enhance other areas of life, not hmm. to just be a bodybuilder who Absolutely. bench press Absolutely. for kilos. And if I can commit to something like bodybuilding and absolutely enjoy it, then it's a real achievement and that's one of the reasons that I, I do it but it it makes everything else in my life seem really easy to achieve mm. if I can accomplish something that is as um, yeah. as committed and as rewarding but yet it's equal to the hard work that goes in it, then everything else I do seems fairly easy. Um, except Laura, giving birth, of course. <laughs> Law of contrast. <laughs> it, it is, and I know I can achieve whatever I, I want to do. I can just go that little bit extra for, for something. Um, and it, it, it's a real motivator. I know that we really don't even tap into what we can do. And we don't tap into our full strengths of um, skill. Yeah, I guess, and I know that I, I really haven't scratched the surface for what I can do, but uh, a lot of it is uh, a lot of self-talk. Um, got to constantly believe in yourself to be better, and it's relative to where you want to go. I mean, each step is a different challenge. My first show was, wow, can I get up there in a bikini after knowing that I was overweight? And, and it was just such an achievement to think, I'm standing in a bikini which was a feat in itself, being 23 kilos overweight, I would never have done that. But to do that on stage in front of about 500 people and say, look at me and judge me in a bikini was mind-blowing. And to be up there and be proud of that um, was an enormous, enormous achievement. And to now get to that next step. So it's each step is relative to where you want to go. And bring so. you to a new level, yeah. yeah. Speaking about that, um, obviously, you know, social and saying, you know, every bodybuilder and every physique athlete and figure athlete deals with is the, uh, I guess, the social network of people just not understanding. Now, obviously, you know, you and I have been very good friends. Um, you've told me many stories, but one particular story that I'd like you to share with the listeners, I think you know the story I'm talking about, is um, you you had a wedding. The, oh, yeah. I'll let you tell the story. Cause it's it was quite, quite funny, actually. I, I, I was challenged fairly early on with um, people not understanding the food and the, the restrictions that I put upon myself with my diet. As I know, it's 80% of the result is nutrition. So I would carry around my own food wherever I would go and feel a bit embarrassed if I was going somewhere and somebody offered me food and I said, no, nope, thank you, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, and it's really just because they couldn't understand the content and the nutritional value of whatever they were offering and the detriment to, to my physique. Can I and I used to take, um, be concerned that they would be offended. But I was being fairly true to myself and what I wanted to achieve. And people around me began to understand my level of commitment with that. And it, it came to a real head when the night before a show, I actually went to a, a friend's wedding. And where most people I know would have not only gone to the wedding, but they would have eaten the food that, yes, was paid for um, and provided and socialised in the extent of, as you do with weddings and, and drink and really have a merry time. Well, um, not only did I go looking rather tanned, <laughs> um, as you do before, I oh, the contest colour, I was very, very funny, and, and a lot of faces that were looking at me quite perplexed, because people think, right, well, that's a spray tan gone wrong on that girl, because I was very dark, but also... Um, I took my own water. Yeah. Not only did I bring uh, my own food, I actually took my own water. water because I didn't want to be drinking sodium and I was um, on water rations. So I didn't want my water glass being topped up unbeknownst to me. Um, so I had my own bottle and it was measured. And people knew then, I think, the level of commitment that I had when I can attend a wedding and um, watch everybody eat. <laughs> 
what I couldn't and still enjoy the night and have a smile on my face yeah. and know that I wasn't missing out. It was my choice to do that because yeah. the, the next day was really critical for what I was doing. One thing I'd like to point out, um, one couple of key words there was it was your choice. A lot yes. of people go along to these sort of things and, oh, poor me, yes. such a sacrifice. Why do I have to? But yeah. at the end of the day, it is your choice. You, yeah. know, you do it and to have that attitude to go into a wedding. Yeah. I know um, yeah, I've, I've been to a wedding. I've had a sort of similar experience a week yeah. out from comp. Yeah. But um, one of the things I just wanted to highlight with this story is I get a lot of clients who uh, they, they start getting into training and um, you know they get a social event happens and you know might be in the middle of a you know a transformation challenge or, or a comp and they stop and they, they, they get caught off and they get thrown off by these social challenges and I just wanted to you know share that story with everyone because it is such a, a brilliant story to show because it, it is no different I mean you, that's you know, right I, I think the Olympics or tr being true to the, like Olympic games or being true to yourself which is more important? Well, yes. I believe, you know, being true to yourself yeah. is always the, the... And it was it was a key also, I constantly say, this is my choice. When people say, oh, you poor thing, you can't eat it. I do actually word back and say, well, this is my choice. It's what I train mm. for and it's very important. So um, that's fine. I've, I've become too like boiled plate, chicken breast and, and food like that because it is my choice. But it was interesting that it, it was a bit of a turning point for some of my closest friends to realise my dedication yeah. and to appreciate what it is that I do and to to offer because it's manners to offer for yeah. food but to, when I say no thank you to actually now accept, accept that no. Exactly and, right. and now I actually get the calls of... Um, uh, Janet, we'd like to cater for you. Can we put this on too? Awesome. And it, it's much more appreciated. And, and often say it's almost the game of uh, frame control. Who has the strongest frame? They yeah. can offer you the food, and you yeah. can say, "Yeah." Well, then they have the stronger frame. Yes. But if you say no, well, then you are now. Yeah, you know, taking yeah. a stance for the stronger frame. So, yeah, and exactly what about... At the same token, gee, some of those foods smell fantastic. Oh, they and, do. Oh, and you've just, you've got to you be can, strong at it. But it, it is, yeah. if I've had my own food there, it's a bit easy to to abstain. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, for the record, you have two kids, you're yes. a mum, you run a uh, successful business, you have an opportunity to make excuses with all the busy and, you know, your active life that you lead. Um, a lot of people make excuses. You have, you know, you, you could... Let's face it, you could make excuses and say, you know, I'm busy, I've got, I've got a family, I've got a business to run, you know, I've got little ones. You don't make excuses. What's the difference between you and them? Um, I think that comes back to one of your early questions about attitude. If the attitude is right, um, be happy with the level that you can commit at is, is probably a good point. If people do have a fairly busy life, don't, don't feel like it's all or nothing. You need to have a good balance and be happy with whatever level you can commit to and then make no room for excuses. People make room for excuses and think about all the reasons why they can't do things. I think people perhaps can concentrate a little more on the reasons they can do things yeah. and what needs to change so they can achieve those little extras. And it's just a choice. Do I choose to uh, park further away and walk to somewhere or do I choose not to? Do I choose to eat something that's um, of good nutritional value for me or do I choose to eat something of no value with it? I have to exercise a lot more to get it off. Yeah. And I, I don't believe there are re reasons for excuses in anything. Be people perhaps um, see themselves as failing before they've given themselves a chance to try. And if you give it a try and be happy with what level you can do, then, of course, you'll start seeing some results and that will perhaps motivate you to keep going. But... Uh, I very rarely have a negative word or an excuse, and and, and Mark, you know what I'm like when I'm training. Yeah. If something, <laughs> there, there's no room for saying the word no. can't do or yeah. no. It just doesn't happen. Um, it, it's you, you, you can't let yourself fail before giving something a go. Um, you may not achieve as much as you would like, but let's give something a try. And why be like everyone else that, that yeah. can't do it? Yeah. I. I don't believe that excuses are a way to feel good. No. Yeah. And Absolutely believe in agree. yourself first. If you believe in yourself, then there, there are no room for excuses. Okay. And a lot of people uh, have like, dif different motives or they see competition as, as different. Some people see a competition as a measuring stick. Some people have the attitude of fir 